learning Git in the terminal is incredibly scary for some. Remembering which command does what and making sure that the command you're running doesn't break a remote branch. So most people rely on visual IDEs. They use something like Visual Studio Code's built-in Git, or they use something like GitHub Desktop. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a gateway into the terminal. We're going to be looking at a project called Lazy Git. It's one of my favorite things to recommend to people who want to still use the terminal, but are too scared to use all the functions. With Lazy Git, you can see the command as it's being written so that you know exactly how to do that command in the future. It also allows you to use the terminal all of the time. With simple one key commands to do the things you do every day, you'll soon be a wizard in the terminal. So here we are with Lazy Git. It's available on all platforms that you could possibly want to develop on, Mac, Windows, and Linux. The idea here is to allow you to do some great work without having to use the terminal to do some of them. For example, interactive rebasing is incredibly complex because you have to edit a to-do file and you can do that in this project and it's really easy. So I've left a link in the description for how to get this installed, but once it's installed on your project, you'll see that you can start using it right away. So here we are in a blank terminal. I'm going to type in lazy git. So now that lazy git has loaded, you now get this experience where you have a bunch of different panels around the side and two on the right, which are command logs and obviously the status of a page. Now, what's great about this is you can interact with it in a couple of ways. So you can use the number keys here. So if you press two, we're now in the file section where we can see what changes have been made. If I hit three, we can see what are the current branches that are available in the local. And then down here we have commits, which is number three. And then when you go to five, you will see stash, which is where if you've got git stash. Now this might look really intimidating and you, maybe you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing here. So they also have an interactive menu. If you hit X here, you can see all the different features and abilities to use. So if you need to fetch, you can just hit F or you can hit enter here and it'll fetch from your remotes. Then if you want to add something here, so let's say this settings file should be included in our repository, we can stage this file. So if you just hit the space bar, you'll see that it's changed from an A and if I hit it again, it's gone. And you can see down in the bottom right hand corner, you can actually see the command that it's using to add these files. So if we just keep pressing space, you'll see them there. And then if you hit something like C, which is commit, you get a commit message. So we can just type in adding settings for VS code and hit enter here. Now, if you look in our commits right now, and we go to four, you can see that we have this apply settings for VS code and it's been added and it shows you the commit, the author, the time and everything that was inserted. But you can see right now that it's red, which means that it's still pending in the ref log. Then from here, we can say, how do we push this up? So we can look through all of these different letters here. I already know it's P, but what you can do is See here, we have P is an uppercase P and P is a lowercase P is for pull. So if I just do shift P, you'll see that this gets pushed. And now the output is down here and we can see that this has been added to our main files here. Obviously you make some, some mistakes sometimes and you need to revert that. Usually it's really easy to do those revert commits using a visual IDE, but usually you have to make a lot of changes. So if you press T here, it says, do you want to revert? And you hit enter you'll see that this has now added a commit that says revert. If we just do push here, now that commit has been added and we've reverted our changes. So it makes it really easy to kind of learn those commands because you can actually see them in here. We can see all of the different changes. You can scroll in here with your mouse if you really want to and see, okay, we reverted this commit and then we pushed this commit back up and now that revert has gone and this no longer exists. Of course, one of the essential things is to ignore files. If this file, for example, where I'm exposing a secret key, which has already been refreshed since this video has been posted, but if you just hit I, you can add it to git ignore, or you can add it to exclude. So if we just do I, and then we just say, this has been added to git ignore. So if I hit space here, you can see down at the bottom again, stages have been filed. So now we can do uh, commit, which is C and type in, uh, ignore.emv and then again shift p so now you can kind of see how this all works together and if you go to your local branches here which is number three you can see all the commits that have happened now maybe you need to create a new branch and usually you would do that by doing get branch but you can also do it right here so if we just look at our menu 
and see how do I do a branch here? And you just press the N key. So instead of having to do git dash dash branch, you can just press N and give it a new name and call it add login. And now we have this branch here. And then the only thing we need to do is actually push this up. So now we're on this branch, do shift P and just say add origin. And then we push that up. And now this is an available branch that is now available remotely. So now we can make changes here. We can merge those in, do all the things that you would normally do with Git. So there you have it, a quick look into lazy Git. A great way to start learning terminal commands if you're very unfamiliar and break away from those visual IDE versions that don't really explain how it works. If you did make it to the end of this video, make sure you click this video right here. It is a YouTube algorithm driven. It'll be something great. I imagine you're gonna really enjoy it. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel.